In this review notes, we will discuss the Philippine Electrical Code and many questions related to PEC because part 2 of the Master Electrician's Licensure Exam is all about PEC. Before you take the RME exam, it is assumed that the person taking the exam has strong knowledge about the application of PEC on wiring methods, motor controls, residential and dwelling requirements, grounding and bonding, electrical symbols, overcurrent protection, lightning protection system, water crop, and other areas in PEC applicable to our industry. But before we go deeper, I want to give you the structure of PEC so that you have a bigger view of what knowledge you should be having before your examination. Let's dive in. Before we dive in deeper, let me ask this question. In a meanwhile, I will answer it. Why PEC is hard to understand? This is one of the basic questions and feelings of all practitioners with regards to understanding the Philippine Electrical Code. For an electrician, this is a serious matter. For an electrical engineer, this is just a simple focus to understand the code. Now, let's break down why code is hard to understand. First, it is written in English language, and English is our second language. The reading level is advanced, so if your reading and comprehension level is not near in advance, understanding PEC will not be easy for you. You need somebody to explain it to you and discuss it with you. If you have a group or online community, you can discuss it there. Second reason why PEC is hard to understand is it takes a considerable amount of time to understand and assimilate the code's meaning. Third reason why PEC is hard to understand is because electrical trade is complex and the reader needs to make sure he knows what specific topic he wants to reference the PEC. If you check the table of contents, you will see a lot of electrical-related topics. Fourth reason why PEC is hard to understand is because the code has many references from other existing codes and manufacturer standards and other technical application. This complicates the basic understanding of PEC. If you are not a dedicated person in your electrical profession, then you need a lot of mental work to do, but you are lucky. In my practical knowledge training services, we are offering webinar for understanding the Philippine Electrical Code. The fifth reason why PEC is hard to understand is because the code changes every three years or five years and practitioner cannot follow the paces of changes. We are lucky because the last edition of PEC 1 was 2009 then, then followed in year 2017 and nothing came out yet this year, 2022. Balitaan nyo ako if meron ng bagong edition, okay? The sixth reason why PEC is hard to understand is because there was a lot of technical courses offering that explained it in layman's terms, like the application of the code and the reason behind it, and no chapter-by-chapter -chapter discussion or section-by-section -section discussion. The seventh reason why PEC is hard to understand is because the profession or the person with the electrical profession is unwilling to commit to learn the code by heart. This pertains to the interest and discipline of the individual person. However, others are willing but they have no time or others are willing but there are some barriers like I previously mentioned. One of the solutions that will solve our problems lies in our professional endeavor to crack and understand PEC. One is to commit to learning the code. If we are serious learners, we must avoid complaining too much about PEC. As I saw some practitioners in social media, they complain too much but never give any solution, right? The way to do is to commit to learning our own Bible of electrical profession. The question lies ahead of us. Have we read the PEC from cover to cover as RME or as a REE? Have we spent at least one hour a week reading it? Or have we read PEC section by section or five pages daily when we are at work? Have we searched for references and compiled it related to PEC topic that we are reading? 
have we created and built our own library of references to understand PEC? That's actually our questions that need to be answered first. If your answer to those questions are yes, then you have to replace me here and explain it to us, okay? Because my answer to those questions are yes, and I admit it's totally very hard to commit to learning. The second solution is encourage our professional organization and private company like Training Center and Review Center to create small courses focusing on different sections of PEC so that everyone interested to learn the code in details can learn the PEC one byte at a time. Some are doing this, but sustainability is the issue. The speaker was not compensated well and we didn't know his time is spent to crack the code so that others can understand it better. Our role is to pay the information we are getting, especially for those who spend time to decode the Philippine Electrical Code. Sooner or later, we will be there. Kapit lang mga katrop. Baka madaming nakikinig na kaya pala nila to decode and explain the code to all in layman's term. The question is, bakit hindi nila ginagawa sa ngayon? If you are the one who knows how to decode it, please contact me. We will create learning materials, okay? So, in order to create small courses, I'm one of them. Devoting my free time to decode PEC, creating presentation, and spending a lot of time to make the code easy for RME and REE to understand. Ibig sabihin, you need to pay me. <laughs> Biro lang. Maybe some of my training you already attended and you paid like design analysis, short circuit calculation, arc plus, protection coordination, grounding and bonding, building maintenance management, and probably you attended some of my seminar already. But this seminar or this webinar in this uh, YouTube, I am conducting it for free for you. I didn't receive any payment for this. I spent at least, you know, for the whole uh, presentation of chapter 1 in PEC, I spent 50 hours to make the first series. I started 2018 and when I had the new PEC, 2017. And now, more series will come. Baka abutan na ako ng bagong PEC. Okay. Just to let you know, PEC is only for qualified person. A qualified person means you understand electrical terms, you study basic and complex electrical theory, you are knowledgeable about electrical safety precautions, safety procedures, and you are updated on electrical trade practices. This is not for everyone. Maybe it is not for you. It is for those qualified people like RME passer, REE, PEE, electrical consultant, electrical contractor, insurer, OBO engineers, and other related trade on electrical profession, and for you as an aspiring RME. So, what is your objective in learning the PEC 2017? I just list down some of your objective. Pero, syempre, you are here attending this webinar in YouTube to understand its use and application and pass the RME board exam. Tama ba? Okay, to guide you to proper electrical installation, if you are electrician, electrical contractors, and electrical practitioner, building official, you want to add up another byte of knowledge from PEC. Third is to avoid improper installation and avoid related danger to life and property. Or you want your work or task or project to be safe and you want to protect life and property that uses the technology of electricity for daily living. Fourth is to validate if existing installation is compliance with the code so that our company can address the statutory requirements. Okay, you have four objectives, but I have only one objective, and that is to make sure I can explain the code to you in a clear and understandable way so that you can have a clear idea how the code is used. Okay ba yun sa inyo? Just comment if you feel you have a positive word for me. It's a good way of encouraging me to proceed with this gigantic task. Now that we know our objectives and some barriers why PEC is hard to understand, let's dive into PEC. I want to start with a short history. Then I'll proceed with the structure and arrangement of the code. And later, if this video will be long, the classification of PEC related to RME review will be presented in another video for online review of RME in the Moodle app. 
Now that we know our objectives and we discuss some barriers why PEC is hard to understand, let's dive in to PEC 2017. I want to start with the short history of PEC as I mentioned. Then I will proceed with the structure and arrangement of the code so that it will help you in your review. Some sample problems will come in in another video for RME Moodle app. If you have your PEC 2017, I encourage you to read the preface. I will just mention in here bullets of information but details is written in the code itself. There are seven editions since 1961 to year 2000. Hindi ko na yata nabutan yung ibang edition dyan, but one of the one in my college years meron. PEC 2000 was the first PEC I bought. Second is PEC 2009, the eight editions release. There was work undergoing by the IIEE committee based on the 2014 NEC. On 2016, a major plan to release the PEC-1 was on its way, but on September 2016, a release of PEC-2017 happened. It was adopted. With the strong leadership of Honorable Francis Mapile and Honorable Jaime Mendoza, PEC-2017 was released. What lies ahead, we didn't know yet. It's almost five years already, or six. Or if we really follow NEC releases, which is every three years, then we are late again. But since it took eight years from 2009 to have the 2017 major release, then we are late again. Our next slide is about how PEC 2017 was organized. This is how PEC 2017 was organized. Chapter 1 to 4 applies generally to all electrical installation, that is the general requirements, wiring and protection, wiring methods and material, equipment for general use. Many questions in RME exam falls on those four chapters. You have to be aware of that. Chapter 1 to 7 is about special occupancies where lots of questions in the RME exam is formulated, similar to special equipment in special condition where those chapters modify and supplement chapter 1 to 4. Chapter 8 is about communication systems, not subject to the requirement of chapter 1 through 7, except when the requirement is specifically referenced chapter 8. This chapter applies to communication system and some question in RME was formulated also using this chapter. Next is chapter 9 which is about watercraft. Before, this chapter is separated. It is volume number 2 of PEC dedicated to watercraft. Some questions in RME exam was formulated with the use of this chapter related mostly to wiring methods in watercrafts. The last structure is chapter 10. It was dedicated to tables. It was applicable when referencing in the code. And we have annexes which you can read independently. Annexes are not mandatory. And now PEC 2017 contains 8 appendices from A to H. This is a piece of supportive information only. It can stand alone but it is not enforceable. Appendices aren't part of the code requirements, not enforceable. It is included for supplementary or informational purposes only. You can read it independent of topics as an additional information for you. And here's the description of the appendices. Appendix A is about electrical symbols which is included in RME exam. Appendix B is Application information for ampacity calculation included in RME exam. Appendix C is conduits and tubing fill tables for conductors and fixtures of the same sizes. Some are included in RME exams. D is wiring design example. E is example of electrical forms. F is PNS or the Philippines National Standard for Electrical Products. G is arc plus hazard warning labels recommended label and H is stable for ARC plus hazard risk categories and PPE ratings. Okay, now you have a general overview of how PEC is organized and you now think I need to make sure I get more than 70% correct answer to all PEC questions in the exam since PEC is so big, 
what are the areas I need to focus on that are included in the board exam? That is a good question. Based on the Moodle RME online review, I categorize all PEC exam in the following. Clearances, height requirements, distances, support intervals, spacing, many questions in PEC are all about this. Included questions are conductor's opacity, types of cables, temperature properties, and conductor sizes. Commonly used conductors falls on these questions. Another categories of question in the board exam falls on the following. Service entrances, service drop, service laterals, conduit types, trade sizes, application, and materials. As you take the exam of RME, you need to familiarize yourself on hazardous locations and hazardous classifications 1, 2, and 3 because most PEC exams include it. Also familiarize yourself to overcurrent devices, ratings, application requirements, and on fuses about rating, trade sizes, and its application together with circuit breakers and disconnects. Other question in PEC fall on motor application, feeders, branch circuits, ratings, protections, locations, operations, and maintenance. And many question is related to branch circuits requirement, limitations, rules, and special use. You need to consider some PEC question about electrical equipment tools, materials, and special appliances together with load densities in different application of locations the continuous and non-continuous loads, requirements, and rules. And you need to review also wiring methods, some uh, given rules on conduits, some working spaces, insulation resistances, and standard. You need to add knowledge about PEC requirements, permitting, and safety practices in the workplace. And lastly, some principles and application of grounding system for electrical equipment and system grounding, building lightning protection system, and for watercraft application of wiring methods and protection. Also, working knowledge about transformer protections, applications, and requirements, similar for generators and motors. All those categories mentioned cover the 50 question of Philippine Electrical Code part of the RME board exam. All those categories mentioned cover the 50 question on the PEC part of the RME board examination. Are you surprised? Well, those are tough actually, only if you don't have proper review. Those categories are discussed in the Moodle Online RME review. Videos are created to discuss those questions that fall under those categories. Even if you are good already in the technical subjects, the PEC exam is a tough one and you need to structure your online review. Why not practice some PEC exam in the Moodle app and check if you can get 70% of all sample board exam problem? I hope you will. See you in the next video related to PEC. For now, you can subscribe in this channel to keep you updated or you can visit my Facebook page and like us to support the Master Electricians Review. Fractalknowledge.com offered online review app, the mobile app, which will assist you in your review Go. There are tons of questions and answers to build your stock knowledge. The Moodle app is available in iOS for iPhone and Play Store for Android. Please contact the following person and message them for more information. Good luck! and see you in your review.